Some of you conquered Black Mimikong once, but the journey doesn't stop there. What if I told you that becoming the true Monkey King requires more than just a single playthrough? In this video, we're diving into 12 crucial endgame secrets that every Black Mimikong player needs to know. Whether you're aiming for the ultimate power or just want to make each cycle more rewarding, this guide is for you. I will be covering all of the things that the New Game Plus has to offer, so ultimately, you can decide if going through multiple cycles is for you. First up, how many times do you need to finish the game to achieve that ultimate Monkey King status? The answer is 3 cycles. That's right, you heard it right. Completing the game 3 times is required to reach a certain upgrade later on. It's not just about bragging rights and you will need this to unlock a hidden feature that will even make you overpowered later on. Before you click away, I know there are a lot of people who struggle to beat their first playthrough but trust me, you will have a lot of cool stuff to unlock if you decide to continue. For players who love the game like me and want to go over the increasing challenge, you are in for a treat. The good news is, most of your hard-earned progress carries over into the next playthrough just like in a Souls-like fashion. Weapons, armor sets, curios, spirits, gourds, soaks, and consumables, all that jazz will all make the jump with you. However, key items do not, so you'll need to progress through the story again if you want to recollect them. A true classic Souls-like design, but at least you get to keep all of the gear and goodies that truly matter. Yes, it may be challenging to face all of the bosses that you've defeated, but with your current gear, you will be stronger and who doesn't want to test all of your hard-earned trinkets and sets beating your old nemesis. Speaking of difficulty, with each new cycle comes more challenges. Bosses can still one-shot or two-shot you even with decent gear and regular enemies become even more dangerous. However, this will only happen if you do not embrace the game's mechanics. Since you have your previous build, you can get around the bosses much faster this time. Expect bosses with larger health pools and even high damage. It is a standard Souls-like challenge and I'm kinda used to it at this point and during your first cycles, it is not that noticeable but once you reach your fourth cycle, this this is where the things are start to get crazy. Now the next one is pretty interesting, with increased difficulty comes better rewards. As enemies get stronger, the XP and will drop rates also go up. However, while these rewards scale with difficulty, certain rare drops like mine cores and curio seems to remain stubbornly elusive. Drop rates for those specific items may not increase, but if you have noticed otherwise, drop a comment below and share the knowledge. But this goes for the raw drop rate alone. Technically, you can force the drop rate to skyrocket by equipping two golden carps, which is one of the benefits of New Game Plus as you will be getting duplicate curios. The max level that Wukong can attain is level 352 and the experience increment per playthrough is massive so reaching this level is completely doable especially if you've used my ultimate farming guides. Link in the description or click the card here. One of the frustrating parts of this game is having limited celestial ribbons per playthrough. This means that you can max all of your armors in one playthrough so each cycle allows you to gather more ribbons which in turn lets you unlock more armor upgrades. This opens the door to trying out different builds and strategies with your gear. Experimentation is key to keeping things fresh. If you are curious about each of the armor sets, max stats, and effects, I've also created a guide covering them all. You know what to do, check the description or the card. Also, a bonus thing is you can upgrade your armors without reaching chapter 3, this time which is a huge help just in case you want to change builds. In order for you to do this, just access any Keeper Shrine. And speaking of gear, new cycles just don't let you upgrade armor, they also allow you to unlock additional weapons. These new tools of destruction often come with unique effects, giving you even more options to tailor your combat style. By the time you're done, your arsenal will be nothing short of legendary. So what are these new stabs offered to the table? Let's do a quick rundown. First on the list is the Adept Fuban Staff and in terms of stats, it has 120 attack stats and adds 25 critical chance but its unique effect makes it good which basically heals you whenever you use your focus charges and depending on how much charges you use, the better healing it provides. While also adding this scattering spine that has this shrapnel looking animation perfect for AoE attacks. It is a nice addition especially if you love roaming around with pummeling enemies with the smash stance. 
as always, if you find this guide useful, subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and engaging in the comments sure helps me a lot. Also, we are trying to build a Discord server where you can find like-minded players, so come and join us. Thank you for your support. The next weapon on the list is the Dark Iron Staff. This staff is simply a monster, and depending on how high the user's total defense, the higher the attack it gains. So if you equip defense stat boosting curios, like for example the gold spike plate, you will also gain additional attack stats. This staff is perfect for tank builds and this staff synergizes well with one of the secret armor in the game like what I'm going to show you later on. Stay tuned for that build and it's worth it. Having 110 for attack stats and plus 5 to chill resistance and burn resistance for its stats. Lastly is the storm flash long staff which is one of my favorites lately. Having 140 attack stat and 9% critical chance for its stats. What is so good about it is when you charge this staff, you will notice that your character also suffers a shock state. Then when the shock state kicks in, your normal attacks will inflict enemies with a thunder bane element. Enemies in a shock state will receive additional damage, your hits will be hitting like a truck. I am very interested in building an optimized lightning build for this one, so stay tuned for that. Aside from these awesome weapons, of course, there are other stuff that you can access only in New Game Plus. One example is the Life Saving Strand spell, which gives you another life just like in Sekiro. This is another leverage when going through higher New Game Plus cycles, as it can provide you more chances of beating hard bosses. This spell can provide gourd charges and even has a chance to skip its cooldown upon usage. Really useful spell if you wish to use it. So the next one is Maxing Out Relic Talents. So going back to why completing multiple runs will benefit you, running through the game multiple times is that you get to max out your relic talents. Once you've done that, the destined one becomes an unstoppable force, stacking abilities that turn him into an ultimate warrior. You do have 6 relics in total, but the main star of the show is the freed mind relic which you can unlock after beating the game with a true ending. For its actual talents, let's do a quick rundown as they can significantly affect your builds or playstyle. The first one is the Elegance of Simplicity, which increases light attack damage moderately. But the ultimate banger here is a Unified Mind talent. This talent essentially can make clone builds a complete powerhouse. Because whenever you do a powerful move like for example Full Focus Charge, your clones will do it as well. This explains the one-shot builds that you are seeing currently in our space. The next one is Unbegotten Undying which provides you a huge damage reduction when activating the aforementioned Life Saving Strand spell. Moving on to the next one and here's a treat for build crafters. Per playthrough, you can increase your curio slots. By the time you've gone through a few cycles, you will have 5 slots in total to fill with powerful curios. This opens up a handful of possibilities for character builds. More power, more options and these things excite me as we can equip identical curios, perfect for targeted builds. As mentioned, having multiple curio slots will not just affect combat but also exploration. I mentioned that you can equip multiple Gordon Carps, right? So drop rates will skyrocket easily which can help you tremendously when farming certain items. Good news for all of you loot hunters is treasure chests respawn in each new cycle. This allows you to collect the same curious multiple times or even stocked up defense by slotting in multiple gold spike plates. Starting over with all of these things makes you think that you are progressing on a brand new journey as you explore the nook and crannies once again, treasure chests will surely provide a dopamine hit. With that being said, unfortunately you'll have to revisit the shrines each time you start a new cycle. But look at the bright side, you're progressing through the game as usual and enjoying the game over again, just like I mentioned. But the main star of the show is oftentimes the greatest driving force of players to go over multiple cycles is the secret Wukong stance. This stance adds another fun and addicting layer in combat. Players can unlock this stance after unlocking all relic talents which explains why you need to beat the game 3 times and equipping the full heavens equal set. To activate this stance, you need to fill in the focus charge to 4 and notice that there is going to be another small gauge apart from our usual gauge. And when the gauge is full, activate it and watch the destined one perform the sick and cool animation of the exclusive heavy attack finisher of the stance which hits a ton of damage. This stance will last 60 seconds and while you are in this stance, you can expect sick combo finishers. This 
these unique movesets are the ones that you can perform during the opening cutscenes or in chapter 6 before fighting the final boss. These stands will be yours forever, however, one big caveat is that you will be locked in the Heaven's Equal set, so if you want to try other builds, you will lose access to these stands. Finally, once you've maxed all of your relic talents, Wukong's original armor sets gets a serious buff and this armor combined the Dark Iron Staff turns you into a tank on the battlefield. With the right curios, you can push Wukong defense to insane levels. Like for example, equipping multiple gold spike plates and equipping Wukong's original armor will skyrocket your defense to 873. That's a lot of defense but the icing on the cake is equipping the Dark Iron Staff. Since this staff is basing its attack boost on your overall defense, you will be getting a whopping 272 attack stat. With this setup, you will be hitting like a truck while maintaining high survivability rate because of your monster defense. All of the new game plus content is great if you truly enjoy the game. Whether you're looking to maximize your builds, unlock hidden abilities, or just make each cycle more rewarding, these tips will help you on your journey to becoming the ultimate monkey king. If you found this guide helpful, make sure to like the video and engage in the comments as it helps me a lot. Subscribe as more guides coming, but to be a true monkey king, you need to put in the work by grinding, so know the best farming spots in this video. Thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one.